Today, uh, we are discussing episode 20 by air date, Court Martial. And it was uh, directed by Mark Daniels. And uh, the story, weirdly, Don M. Mankiewicz. And he is famous, famous, famous. He has a lot of relatives all in the industry and they write good stuff. And what's his big uh, uh, claim to fame? Huh? He wrote, he wrote a, a book called Trial and it was made into a movie in 1955. Which I think it's interesting that now we're in court martial. Yes, that's Bro. interesting trivia. But he's got something much more famous that we're supposed to know. I'll look it up in a moment. And and uh, the teleplay was done by Stephen Carabazos, and we know him. And the air date was February second, nineteen sixty-seven. So nineteen sixty-seven. Right. Dang. We're catching up. And catching uh, up. the production order number is fifteen. So. So what this is about is uh, there's an incident on the start on the Enterprise, and they're going into a, what's it called? Some sort of storm, ion storm. And so Captain Kurtz reacting to the storm. They have a guy in an ion pod, which I have no idea what an ion pod looks like. But anyway, he goes into a pod. Uh, Kirk is adjusting. They're not quite into the severity of the storm yet. And somehow Kirk jettisons a pod prematurely, which kills some guy. And this whole thing is Captain Kirk says, I didn't do that. It's, it's not in my being to do that. And uh, so they they're decide to have a court martial, hence the name of the show, the episode, Court Martial with Captain Kirk. So that's a general intro of this episode, right? Did I miss anything? Do you want to add or subtract? No, no. Uh, that's that's the gist of it. Uh, Kirk's in trouble. <laughs> Kirk's in trouble. Kirk's in trouble. But he's actually he's he's a very forceful. It shows how strong Captain Kirk is in this one, and his convictions, how convicted he is, and and his crew, how his crew are pretty much standing behind him. And Uhura, why I imagine why she wanted to leave the show. But you, it's nothing that you. It's not what you think it is. You want to go over your start with your notes here? Oh, sure. I'll, I'll post. We'll do do a few things. I thought it was interesting when she says that ship nomenclature specify. You know, very mechanical. Way. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the first thing I thought was uh, when we heard uh, heard her do it in uh, Mud's Women. Incorrect. <laughs> your correct name. Right. <laughs> right, right. Right. You're not gonna. You're not, what does he say, uh, gentlemen? Surely you're not going to take the word of a soulless mechanical device. Yeah. Over yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <Even> correct. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so they have that little brief interview, don't they? And uh, we get to see through the windows uh, some of Starbase Eleven, and yeah. uh, and uh, then we have he he demands that. Uh, when does he demand that? Oh, that's he oh the court martial. Yeah, that's at the end of the first act right that's not at the end of the teaser i missed that sorry i messed that up yeah so what i was reading was very well written it had lots of detail in it like this maybe i can't express it very it was very fun to read but generally the overall opinion was that this was a lower end episode and the director even i think made the comment when they were done and it was over it was thank god this is over with I have a completely different view of the episode <laughs> and, than what. Well, I could see that. I mean, especially when it's supposed to be a, a bottle episode or whatever, one set episode, and it turns out to be like, you know, five or seven or much more than they wanted it to be. So, you know, I think it was kind of out of control, probably for people that were trying to make the episode. They're like, okay, well, we're not going to get this in one. We're, we're, you know, so they kept making sets for it. So, yep. This also didn't go, it wasn't handed in to Stan Robertson at NBC on time. It was again one of those episodes where they kind of forgot to to get it in for approval early on. And Stan Robertson didn't like this episode at all, said, well, I have lots of opinions about this. There's a, some missing action. Well, if you look at the guy's badges, speaking of badges, maybe one of the reasons I bought it up, the yeah. red shirts you have there yeah. and the one people in the bar. Yeah. They're not part of the Enterprise crew, and they said everyone had Enterprise crew badges on, and it was a big mistake. 
okay, in prior episodes, everybody from other ships had different kinds of badges. But didn't that change over time to where then Starfleet just had badges? Doesn't this just reinforce the thing that eventually, eventually everybody had the same Delta Shield? Maybe so. Maybe that's what they were getting to. I don't know. But what I was reading was that the badges they were not Enterprise badges. That there's that with those badges they should have been Enterprise true, and obviously they're not in the bar. So, but if, if we're transitioning to make it the universal a Starfleet badge, then of course it's correct. So I don't know, but but yeah. maybe it's a mistake, and that's why it ended up that way. They're saying, hey, it was a mistake. They should have been all different badges, like they used to be in earlier episodes. And now they made a mistake, and now they had to cover their butt. And now it's go. It's a fleet. It's Starfleet. Starfleet bed. Yeah, exactly. I can see that in the screenshot. Yeah, it looks like the Delta Shield there. I can't tell though if it's the command one or not. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, and then you get into the demanded by Captain Kirk. So he's being confronted, which seemed like they were trying to get into the story really quick by him pushing Captain Kirk, saying, "No, you didn't. You're you're." uh purging yourself on your report you didn't do what you said you did and it's obvious but i'm like man he reviewed that report really quick to to uh you know accuse captain kirk of uh perjuring himself in his report because you know how he went to the computer he looked at the report he went to the computer and then he said hey you didn't do what you said you did yeah that was, i see it was like that was a fast review don't you think i mean i thought it was kind of they, well, because they, everybody had their mind already made up. They all probably knew Finney. Finney was at uh, in training. What was he? A teacher probably for a long time, right? Yeah. Everybody knew him around the base, perhaps even this base. Everybody but talking he, he between talked. the time that what was his uh, uh, God? What, what's his name? Commodore there. Is he a Commodore, right? It's Commodore Stone. Commodore Storm. So by the time Commodore Storm got William Shatner's or Captain Kurtz report handwritten on paper by the way uh and then he gets the computer thing and he goes to his computer and puts it in then he says right away you pledge you know you you perjured yourself here because it didn't happen obviously the way you said it did i don't know if you were under a great deal of stress i don't know but he came to that really fast i mean i i thought i i would have needed more time to review what kirk had written and then looked at the computer printout to get that but he went right into it would have even left kirk squirming for a bit while i was sitting there reading i would have right, I right? I mean, uh, uh, well, he's a commodore he gets to do that kind of thing <laughs> a couple of beats longer would have been good i thought because it's like really fast i thought it happened really fast so mm -hmm. but maybe i should have you know aired on the side of well it's taken longer but for for purposes of showing us this historical document, they cut some time out. Well, you know this Mark Daniels guy, 14 episode, he was known for chop, 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 and always at the end, that's a wrap, we're, we're on the wrong set, and you know, out of there. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> so, so uh, what else you got here? What else? Star you got? There you go, Starbase 11. It is on the planet. So you did get footage of Starbase 11 on the planet surface. I thought it was more like uh, the Trouble with Tribbles, where it was a, you know, a floating space dock kind of thing. Oh uh, yeah, that that was what you imagined this Starbase Eleven. Yeah, Starbase Eleven was more like that. Yeah. Uh huh. I wonder what what was the remastered? You watched the remastered version? Did they show anything on the? You know, they might have. I wasn't really paying attention to that so much, and if they did, it was pretty quick. All right. I, I'd have to go back over it and take a look. But I, I remember there was a planet and then they kept saying Starbase 11 and I was thinking for some reason in my head, it was like, you know, uh, you know, the other thing. And then I'm going, well, they keep going back to the planet. So I just have a question. How come Captain Kirk has all these great friends that are very beautiful women and I have friends that look like you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why is that? Why is that? Why do your friends all look like me? <laughs> And yours look like me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. No, we got to put that in there. That's a great quote by uh, McCoy. Yes. Because he's, uh, he's a man's man. He, uh, yeah, he's a man's man. He has uh, power and... Um, and women. And friends in high places. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like in this episode, they make him unflappable. He asks Are for we? a drink. And then he says, 
I should have felt it like air uh, in the air, like static electricity. <laughs> the way he delivers that though sounds always. I it always uh, I always pause when I listen to him. So it's <laughs> static electricity. Uh, uh, funny funny line from the captain when he says, "I hope I'm not crowding you." When he's taking talking to Cogley and he's got his books everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, you got a problem with books, you know? Hey, so I got a question for you. So there is supposed to be an error on the readout on from the computer for Spock. Did oh, you cap- uh, no, no, what? Okay, oh. so the the computer said he's a lieutenant commander, and people are saying he was a commander, not oh. a lieutenant. Oh yeah, is yeah. that true? Is that true? Well, I thought in the second season he becomes a. Well, he we're not in the season yet, then. No, we're so- not. So is that what happens in this episode? They say, they say Lieutenant Commander, but he ha- is or has. Is. Someone says somewhere I was reading that he's a commander and they're saying Lieutenant Commander. So maybe that's someone else is there. So he goes into the bar. Well, he's in, when he's in the bar, we kind of already skipped the bar, but he's in the bar and all those guys have an attitude to him and they really don't even know what happened. I mean... I guess they heard there's a court martial, so they're drawing their information, hearing that there's a court martial, and then he screwed up and killed one of their buddies. They have made up their mind, and come on, in that a society, the computer rules. The computer has already made up their mind for them. Which brings me to a question because I thought a lot about this because they talk. It's like two things are on trial, right? On this thing, Captain Kirk's on trial. But the computer's on trial as well, right? So well, they're saying the computer's All on with Cogley, right? Not with the rest. Everybody believes the computer going, how could the computer be wrong? Well, Finney says that. I mean, uh, uh, Stone says that. Commander Stone says the computer's not wrong, yeah. right? And and uh, Spock refers to, she says, oh, you're saying the computer made a mistake or something like that. And he goes, no, I didn't say that. I said, it's there's a mistake. Not that, you, that the computer made a mistake. So it, it was an interesting thing to me to see, like, all these two parallels going in. So what I was talking about, Uhura, though, was I said, Jesus, I, I, at first I didn't think she talked at all. So I had to look her up, and I think she has, like, four lines in this whole episode. So I, I'm sure she's going, well, you know, why do I show up for work? Nine, nine lines. <laughs> Does she have, well, I don't know that she has nine. Does she have nine? I can, I'll, I'll read them for you. Bridge here. Okay. Go ahead, Captain. Well, he should have been there 10 minutes ago, sir. Meteorology reports ion storm upcoming captain. That's four. Uh, Attention commander, Finney, report to pod for reading on ion flights, five. Call from the pod, sir, six. Aye, 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 sir, (laughs) seven. Variance fading, eight. All secure, sir. (laughs) At first, I didn't think she had any. I'm like... I don't think she, so I had to look it up. So nine lines. Wow. Nine lines. Uh, interesting. I, I'm not sure she's going, why did I show up? <laughs> but they didn't show up until 12 minutes into the show. Right. And, but then they put her in, uh, it's not, uh, the, the Russian guy. Chekhov. Chekhov. So she's sitting in Chekhov's spot too. So they gave her more to do as far as action is concerned. But as far as lines are concerned, she had to emote a lot, but not not much lines. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. So you have a comment about that, don't you? What? About her and leaving? No, 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 no. I was just saying, uh, no. Remember, she, she, I don't know when she decided she was going to leave uh, Star Trek. Remember? I, I'm not sure when that happened exactly, but I can imagine if you go to work and you get nine lines, you're like, eh, I don't know. Because I remember that on uh, the next gen, uh, one of them left because she didn't. She said I, they could have stuck a pair of legs up there for me. Ta- Tasha Yar, right? Tasha. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. They said they should have just put a pair of legs because they really didn't need me there, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, but on Uhura, I was like, but you know, I mean, to be to be fair, most of it was supposed to happen somewhere else, so the bridge crew wouldn't have been there much. I have a. I have a comment uh, in my trivia, in my database, uh, so from 30 years ago. She said, oh, I wrote, Uhura smiles. She is happy for her captain. Nice touch. Okay, but when we go back, so we were in the bar. Did you the guys lose, lose your spot? Attitude. Yes, in the bar. Everyone has an attitude with him, and and he's not really going to put up with that, Kirk. Captain Kirk, he doesn't want to put up with no. He's like, 
you know i know what i did again he's pretty unflappable although he does kind of want to get in a fight with that guy he's like what what are you saying you know what are you what are you talking about you know you want to say something <laughs> say, say it to me now and then he goes well i think i already said what i, what I said i did say it so that was kind of good. So we went through all the awards and and here's the deal. I think part of the crux of this whole thing is everyone's saying how great Captain Kirk is, right? He couldn't have made a mistake. Kirk says, I didn't make a mistake. I know I didn't make a mistake. Spock said he could make a mistake. He's like a hammer dropping and gravity pulling it. You just know that the hammer fell on the ground. If there's a positive gravity force, if there's a positive gravity force on it, on a planet, you drop a hammer, it's going to fall down. You don't even need to look. You know that it's going to go down, right? Captain Kirk's the same way. He's unflappable. McCoy says the same thing, but not Captain Kirk. Well, is it possible? Well, yeah, but to a normal human like you and me, but not to Captain Kirk. Okay. Okay. For, how about for any normal human? <laughs> <laughs> for any normal human, right. Any normal human, but not Kirk. But I think that that, I think that that's kind of cool. And so it made me question what this episode is about. I don't know that I really figured out what this episode was about. And I think that's what someone was talking about procedurally. This this was all messed up. If if you're in a real court of law, it, it's not it's not procedurally correct, this episode. It's not correct. So, but I was trying to figure out, okay, what, what are they trying to say in this episode? And do you know what they're trying to say in this? I don't know whether they're trying to make a statement about computers or trying to make a statement about these crazy Irish people named Finney. <laughs> I don't uh, think it's I don't think it's man against machine. I think it's man against man. Ultimately, isn't it? Come on, we made, made the computer. But what was the point about his daughter? Did his daughter, when she came back in, were on her on his daughter when she's at first very upset with Kirk, and then she's going, "Oh, I read the letters that Dad wrote about you. You're wonderful. You're great. You just need to get a. You need to get a." Did she talk to her dad? Is that what they were getting at? Did she know he was alive already on the second time she visited Kirk? Uh, no. This episode was re-edited and things are out of order. Is that what it is? That's why you're having a little trouble with it. And I seem to be skipping over that fact all the time. But oh. yes, it, 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 it was filmed in a different order. And it was reordered during editing. So that's why you're confused about her, her being mad happy happy mad and happy again or whatever well she was very angry the first time she said you killed my dad when she walked in the first time to kirk there's the man that killed my dad wearing that i'm sorry but that was the most ridiculous outfit i don't know if they were trying to make her look like she's two years old or what but i've never seen an outfit like that except on a little girl of two uh, it's like a little sailor's outfit it was a sailor's outfit out of plastic out of plastic with the little sparklies on it. And I'm like, oh, don't tell me you have one. Yeah, I couldn't figure out whether it was her father that she saw and he said, hey, I'm not dead. Don't worry about me. Or or what it was. I, I couldn't figure that out. I don't know. And you remember he said he had to go back to the... Uh, Cogley had to go to the planet to, on an urgent business. I assume that's where he went and got her, brought her on board. And then he gets that's right. I didn't understand that either. Why he had to go and and go down and get her. I didn't. Oh, I know. Though they did say that in the editorial, they said to talk him out of whatever he's doing. Yes. Right. And he said, "You brought her on board." Yeah, Why exactly. you have to do that. That's when he loses his focus and he takes the phaser away from Captain Kirk. Um. How? How what? How can he take the phaser away from? Him? No, no. He takes. He takes his. He he has a phaser pointed at Kirk. And then when the when he when he finds out that his daughter's on board, he turns away in in disgust and he's killing the ship and his daughter's gonna go with it. Yes. Which I guess they could just beam him down to the planet, right? Just I mean, as a deterring. They've done other things much more spectacular than that. Oh, you mean beam him down? As as the enterprise spirals into the decaying order, they could have just got everybody beamed down to the planet surface. Uh yes. But you would have had a technical complication where the the um, transporters don't work when you're running out of power and you've short circuited it with double lot cable. Beaten and sobbing, Ben told me I love that line. <laughs> uh, Mark Daniels later said, "While we were making court martial, we all felt, oh God, this is a dog. Let's get this over with as best we can." Problem: the part of the problem was that it didn't have much action action in it 
Also, Elijah Cook couldn't remember his lines. Okay, I, I, I do. I trust you on that. So it doesn't seem like it's a single set show anyway, because if they're going to go back to the Enterprise and they have the action on the Enterprise where Finney's on the Enterprise and he's, he's sabotaging the Enterprise, that has to be, maybe they're saying a single set outside of the Enterprise set. Uh, maybe they make one additional set, they already got their other stuff, and that would take care of it for the, for the episode. They did Although they did, they did redress and they could use the bridge. It's already built. Right. And they, but they recycled the chairs because they were in the courtroom. Uh, oh, were they? Yeah. 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 So the chairs, they just drug them off the bridge and throw them in the courtroom. <laughs> right. I mean, they're in the, they're in the, they're, they're all, they're all lined up sitting on the, on the chairs, uh, in the court. Kevin says, I'm right. No, they, they I'm, I'm sure I'm right. I, I know that that's what they did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, of course. So what else do we got? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what you, we got. Okay, so um, you mentioned the, the line about if I let go of a hammer on a planet that has a positive yep. gravity, I need not see it fall to know that it is in fact fallen. We had the we had the lady uh, uh, being queried by Ariel Shaw, who said, mm, "Yes, ma'am. Mm, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes." You know, was, I wish I got, I got to find my notes because I said I said. I bet Bruce and his friends say this to themselves all the time. There's one line in this that Captain Kirk says something, and I said, I bet these guys use this line all the time. I got to find it because because uh, it was just so funny. It's like one of those, you know, that you just would, that I could just see you guys using, you know. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Tons of stuff in here. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we talked about uh, Jamie, Happy Ned, um, the stare down. Oh, I thought it very interesting that the way they cut what they what they filmed was when the commendations were being listed off and captain kirk is standing up straight he is in my opinion being shot made to us to believe that he's staring at stone and stone is staring him right back because there's a fairly couple of close-ups of those two guys going at it as we hear the computer going accommodations palm leap of x and r peace mission blah 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 Right, right. It looked. It, I thought it was great. Why did Stone get a hair about him so quickly? I just don't. I don't understand that either. I mean, Stone. Stone says they're two of a kind, right? They're so far above everyone else. Stone says we are so. Yes. There's 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 one in a million like us, and yet he gets the biggest hair above his butt about Captain Kirk and this mistake. And I'm going. I don't understand this. I just didn't understand why he took that tack. It must have been because of the editing, because it just seemed like it just didn't seem appropriate. It didn't seem to fit the crime in a way. If if you don't think if, if even if you think it seems like, well, maybe something's going on here beyond my beyond my ability to comprehend. And but he doesn't. He says, Kirk, you really screwed up this one. Uh, yeah, well, well, he could have someone standing on, on Commodore could have the heavens. A bad day because of Star Fleet. You're gonna make this guy set this guy as an example. <laughs> well, but Finney wasn't that great. Everyone knew Finney wasn't that great. I mean, it took him forever. He was a instructor. He couldn't get things right. And then, and this reminded me of another one that's going to be coming up. I think the final episode. This is a lot like the final episode. Isn't the one the turnabout maneuver or whatever it's called? Turnabout intruder or something like that. Intruder um, where Kirk. Uh, is in the body of a female and that yeah is she also has she she also says i could have been the commander of an enterprise or something like that yes yes okay i see some people fighting for or wanting that that position what are you saying well but saying that that it's his fault that they did not achieve that position i think in the turnabout and turnabout intruders am i did i get the name right turnabout, turnabout intruder? intruder yeah she it, basically I, says the same thing as what finney says you know if it fine. wasn't it wasn't it's the same kind of deal if it wasn't for kirk they would have been captains of the enterprise and or a captain of some starship but because of kirk they didn't become what they what their how shall i say this you know their their ability they didn't reach their they didn't achieve their peak performance their their ability they didn't reach they didn't realize their abilities or something like that. This is very similar, isn't it? I think I think it is. I don't think I'm wrong. No, we it'd be nice to be able to do a a side by side, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. look at the similarities in these episodes. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think it's similar or you don't think it's similar? Uh there's a there's a uh, yes, there's a similarity because of the power struggle, the the captain's position, the I could could have wanted. I could have 
says the squire. The squire. All right, so we had the stare down. I thought that was good. Um, uh, Kirk says, and nothing is more important than my ship. I find that that was it. I always find that that's a dangerous thing for him to say. Yeah. Because that's so absolute. I mean, I feel like, wait, 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 wait. So your crew can do whatever. The, you don't care about your crew. Nothing is more important than your ship. You'll go to the point where you'll kill people. I thought. Every time he says that, I just, I go, you can't, you can't say that in court. You mean it's the context of what he says it? Because I always took it to mean, I thought he meant the ship included the crew, right? It's all the same thing. So. I, if, yes, that's what it's supposed to be. And that's how I'm supposed to take it. But whenever he says that line, powerfully, I know, and nothing is more important than my ship. Uh, I just feel like they're going to twist his words and they're going to say, well, you don't give a damn about your crew. You only care about your ship that it doesn't get crushed by Apollo like a tin can. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like well, I want to start this episode over again. I feel like I'm kind of discombobulated. Maybe this episode is a little discombobulated or is it just the way this meeting is going to. Okay. How about, how about the trivia that says, by installing a booster, we can increase that capability on the order of one to the fourth power. Well, one to the fourth power is one. <laughs> How about order at four <laughs> orders of magnitude? How about 10 to the fourth? Did they really say that? Captain Kirk says, by installing a booster, we can increase that capability on the order of one to the fourth power. I'm going to have to say I agree with them that they just wanted to get done with this episode because you're right. That's so. So did you refresh the uh, the episode? I did. I did. So I did. You see at 50:45, uh, there is where Uhura smiles when they have turned off, masked all the heartbeats of everybody, and there is one left. And she knew, and she went from looking over towards the captain to curling up her. Uh, corners of her mouth. She started to smile. I got a little trivia on that too. I see that. Yeah. Uh, the, my trivia is I used to have uh, a white noise generator that would mask heartbeats, but uh, when I got arrested, it was confiscated and they never gave it back. She has a powerful job that she didn't need to get weepy. Okay. Yeah, I just think if she, I can justify so everything in the episode. I mean, oh, okay. it for more than friends. Okay, well, here you're gonna like this one because I like this. Commodore Stone, Commodore Stone is the highest ranking African American, assuming he was an American, to appear in the original series. He has also commanded a starship at one time. That's kind of cool. That that means they were really forward thinking because at that time in the '60s, we really weren't that. And by we, I mean the United States in general and the South, they weren't really nice to, to the African-Americans or the black people in the United States. No, no. So the, the crew of the enterprise and the way they portrayed it, that was, that was great. That was forward thinking. Like you said that, Yeah. right. That's the way it should be. And this is, this one's obvious to both of us. Uh, James Duhan and George Decay do not appear in this episode. So who almost didn't appear, but these two definitely did not appear. Yeah. They had three lines each. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's about it. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was, maybe it was us and maybe it wasn't us. Maybe it was the episode that's kind of discombobulated. And so we're discombobulated. I just don't uh, feel like this kind of came together all that well this time. Okay. So <laughs> rating, everybody thought this was a low end episode. And it was poor. And you mentioned that they didn't do court martial stuff in the correct way. Right. And I am completely different about that going, I must be ignorant. And it, I'm just, I've just glossed over a lot of problems, apparent problems with the episode. I know that their editing thing kind of gets me confused the way it, I don't quite understand Jamie's condition in that show uh the rating is um i don't have anybody in the 90s i can't i don't really want to put 
that show in the 90s because I have my favorite show or my the ones that yeah. give me a neat feeling because something was going on in my life at the time when I was watching it, not because the episode is good. Those need to go into the 90s. So this is a this is in the 80s somewhere easy, like all the rest. Is it as good as the fun show we watched? Oh, yeah, easily. So so if the other one was at 87 with the fun one with the F-104, yeah. then this is an easy 89 or 90. 89? You're going to go that high with this episode? Dude, you had as much trouble following this episode as I had. Yes, but I like Cogley. You like what? I like Cogley, and there's at least three lines that I yeah. from this all of the time. Beating and sobbing, and uh, and the hammer, and uh, am I going too high? No, it's your rating. It's not my rating. It's You're, you're not yeah, going you're too high. Yeah, okay. It's your rating. Right, and maybe, and maybe I'm learning to go higher because I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from 70 to 90 and you're from like 50 to 90 so far. And I need to, maybe I'm trying to stretch I'm, out I, early. I think I, the only ones that would have been there are early. I, I'm going to give this, uh, I was going to go 65. I, I, I like the acting, like you said. I liked it. They gave the woman a strong part in this one. Uh, I liked it. Captain Kirk's unflappable. I like a lot of it, but I thought the story was hard to follow. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I read some stuff about it after I watched it. I watched it twice. Actually, more like three times because that when you heard I'm talking like this, I was just kind of <laughs> like, uh, but I did find it hard to follow and I couldn't understand. And then the fight scene at the end was too, uh, you know, I mean, when he kind of turned away because no one would do that. No one would would take their phaser away from someone just because they're talking about their daughter. I mean, in, in that case, I think it would even made him more intense, more focused on what he's doing and saying, you know, you shouldn't have done that instead of like crying like a little baby. Right. So I'm going to give it, I, I'm going to give it like a 68. Okay. And I will give it uh, an 88. Okay. Reputed episode budgets. Let's see if it shows Spectre of the Gun on this one. Okay. Average cost. Per episode was one hundred ninety thousand. Is that true? I don't know. I thought you were saying it was more than that. One hundred eighty-six, and then less from there on, from down. One hundred ninety might be on a good day uh, on a first season, but not every. No, it says average cost. So if they took all the episodes together, aggregated them, put them in a blender, and pulled out the average, it'd be one hundred ninety thousand. Yeah. If right. Nope. Okay. I will tell you one thing about this episode. You know, this is where you can tell they started fighting for who was smarter, uh, Kirk or or uh, or uh, Spock, because they said who could do that? Only three people: Captain Kirk, Spock, or or um, Finney. Well, Finney was records office officer. Spock yeah. is would be his Spies. boss and would have access, and is a computer nerd, a uh, uh, genius, class. A seven something like that, yeah. And then who Kirk because Kirk. he has keys to everything, right? Yeah, he would be able to override. And well, but still, I mean, he would. You know how technical. Oh, you, you said know. smart, yes, and they showed yeah. that off when they said, "Hey, look, we already know that Kirk and Spock play chess very well." That yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and Kirk says, "Oh, maybe you could beat the next captain." And Kirk is the one that goes in unplugs the ship from crashing right he's pulling out those wires out of the wall yeah well i thought this was uh, it was a good a good episode that you and i made today's a good episode we'll just have to tighten it up and we got some good trivia and you showed some nice little show and tells and uh so we're good all right bruce it's great to hear you great to see you I think she was a good blonde. I think she was something as good as blonde. I liked it. She played it. She played a good part. She played a good part. He's a really good actor. He's a really, really good actor, I think. Don't you? You know, you know that Barney Rubble? He's a really good actor. <laughs> you want to know more numbers? Sciences. Are you trying to, you trying to show me your nipples? Yes. <laughs> Because here's the uh, old camera. That is a weird logo you have there, though. Is it different than mine, isn't it? What do you mean? What's your logo? Look down on your chest, or bring it up. I can't. I can't see you. What? Uh, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, 
see here? There you go. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here's the other camera video. Does it switch on the fly? Oh yeah, it does. All right. Hey. I like the other one better. Really? Okay. That so one frames you kind of odd. That one kind of really just fall, cuts your head. You're just like a round circle. Like your, your head looks like an egg. See that? Or put on the other camera. Okay, I'm going to try that. I'm switching to the, the other one. The other one's better, I think. Yeah, I like that one better. Don't you? It looks good. That looks really good. Is it a, is it a clean, clean uh, picture? Yeah, it's it's nice and clean. And your I, head doesn't connect. What? And I don't and I don't look like a. You look uh, like you have ears in this one. The other one, you look like just an egg. <laughs> I I am. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bruce, yeah. All right. You ever, uh, you ever watch the annoying orange? You'll have to see that sometime. I don't know that. All right, we're so 